and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. The Mass continues on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be Spirit of God and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads. God of hosts, who kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant John, that he bore witness to the Lord by his life and death. Give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumph may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the Act of the Apostles. Chapter 4, verse 1, 5. 
the rule, the ruler, the ruler, the ruler, elders and strife assemble in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, if your son and any son, on all who were of the high priest, family, when they had made the prisoner stand in their midst, they inquired by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Ruler of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who did sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in a good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom were crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is none other name on the heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Epistle of John chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. First John 3, 16 to 24. We know God's love is by this, 
that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for others, for one another. Now, how does God love abide in us? And anyone who abides this world, God gives peace to a brother or sister in need and yet restores yourself. Little children, let us love, not for the law, for the speech, but for the truth and action. And by this, we will, we will know that we are from the truth and we. We show our hearts before him. Whenever our heart is condemned us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, in our hearts, do not condemn us, for we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey, and we, we obey his commandment and do what is pleased to him. For this is his commandments that we should believe in the name of his Son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us all. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abide in us. He abide in them and by this we know that he abided in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Yes.
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. For there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of Speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reflect with you this morning on the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, on a general sense of the whole of the Acts of the Apostles, along with the reading from 1 John. Chapter 3, particular reference to God abiding in us by the Spirit that He has given to us. Why do we look back? Is there a way of looking back in order to go forward? There is a sense in which we as human beings love a good origin story. And in all human cultures, there are stories about the beginning of peoples. And we do it with our autobiographies and the church's saints. And part of our dread and fascination with the world includes some quite spectacular origin theories. Is it a primary need of the human heart to go back in order to go forward? We would really like to know what Ralph was like before he became prime minister. We would like to know. 
what Marcia was like before she left for Barbados. We would really like to know what Leopold was like before he became bishop. Otis is not interesting, so we would really want not to know nothing about him. Is this just a fundamental drive for genealogy? In the recent 90s, family reunions were a big thing. And tracing one's story through the generations was very popular. The indigenous peoples and we of African, Indian, and the European diaspora ought to take a serious interest in genealogy, figuring out who we came from and how and when everyone is related to each other. The book of the Acts of the Apostles is the equivalent to the church's genealogy. We go all the way back and find out how we started, the first days of the church, what happened at the very beginning of it for all of us as Christians. This story of the beginning of the church is just glorious. The church is alive. The church is on the move. This is the church as the bride of Christ. They are doing theology. They are living together. They are eating together. They are praying together. This is a kind of community that most church leaders dream about. Is this how we experience church? Historically, we look back at a church that has committed systematic genocide against peoples and groups, participated in power struggles with other nations, that has wrapped itself up in the power of the state and used that power for oppression and injustice in the name of God. We note slavery, we note apartheid, we note Nazism as some of the bigger things. And for many of us, it is more personal than that. Maybe it happened in our individual church community. We have been part of churches full of corruption, greed, abuse of power, abuse of people, Churches full of gossip and backbiting. Churches that have told us they loved us and then silenced our voices because of our gender, race, or social status. The church is supposed to be the answer to our woundedness. But instead, many of us sit here and the church is the reason we are wounded. If we are the bride of Christ, we are not wearing white. But the news does not end with bad news. It never ends with Good Friday. The good news is that it is not up to us. We do not need to be perfect for God to work in the church. We do not need to have our stuff together before God can start to move in our midst. For all eternity, God is working and is still working. The church is God's beloved. And God is not done working with her either in the structures and institutions or in the individual person. That together make up this body of Christ. And we know this because the spirit abides with us. 
The Spirit is at work when other people fail us and when we fail other people. Because here is the thing. We go back to that beautiful, inspiring passage from the Acts of the Apostles. And then we step back and look at the whole story of the Acts of the early church. It is exciting as the young church leaps into the world empowered by the Spirit, loving people and preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. But it's also full of stories of embezzlement, church conflict, racial exclusion, leadership failures, congregational self-destruction, and in fighting. And yet, and yet, here we are today. We are still moving. The church is still moving. The spirit is still moving. The horrible, heartbreaking failures of the early church did not stop the spirit from moving and from continuing to move and aiding the spread of the good news. Our current heartbreaking failures cannot stop the grace of God from continuing to move in us and between us. Because the main character in the book of the Acts is not Peter, even with his fantastic preaching. It is not Paul, even with his radical missionary work. The main character of the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit. And the way that the Spirit sweeps through our lives, whether we want it to or not, and sweeps through our churches, even when we cannot see a way that things can be made new, it remains that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Clearly, what creates a real and lasting unity in the church is the love of God among us. In other words, the truth of the matter is that it is the love that unites Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that brings unity to the church. Given the variety of personalities, cultures, worldviews, and expectation among those of us who actually make up the church. It seems reasonable that the love of God is the only thing that can possibly hold us together. As we turn our attention away from our efforts at promoting unity and focus on the love of God that binds us together, then we have the opportunity to become a community that lives in such a way that the world may believe. The heart of the gospel, God's love for the world is revealed in Jesus Christ. And those who proclaim that they belong to Jesus seek to love as he loved. And so God's love is not abstract, but made visible in Jesus. And the author of 1 John admonishes us to make our love visible rather than sentimental and abstract. Love becomes authentic when it's acted out in the world in concrete ways with others. So we cannot cynically say that the world would be a wonderful place without people. The world is, can be a wonderful place when all of us abide by the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that is what we are seeking to do in this moment of worship. When the church gathers as a corporate body, it does so primarily 
to express, relive, and experience the love of God. To give God his due. Our Lord ministered to his disciples, teaching, encouraging, and admonishing them. And we too, as we share together in this act of worship, participating together, we will share the body and blood of Christ, celebrating that moment when God's love in Christ is made visible. And then we depart from the table to go into the world in the strength of the Spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus. But we need to do so for others. And we need to do what Jesus did for us. For he reminds us at all times. He heals he nourishes, strengthens, forgives, and challenges. And so the church manifests itself as the gathered community. But it also manifests itself as it disperses and infiltrates the community. We ought not to hide behind our stained glass windows and fortified by our walls. The very principle of the incarnation demands that we take God's love with us by dispersing and identifying with the community yet without imitating them. The church we ought to be building, the church we are building by the power of the Spirit is a living network of relationships that will last for a lifetime beyond color, class, and creed. The church needs a passionate connection and commitment to Jesus to begin to inspire this move. And when we truly discover Jesus crucified and resurrected as radiating the love of God, we will be liberated from the tyranny of style versus content, politics versus religion, religion versus science, evolution versus creation, God versus humanity, humanity versus the environment, rich versus poor, pink versus black, tall versus short, fat versus slim, young versus old. With a true sense of Jesus, we will know common ground and respect the dignity of each person. With a true sense of Jesus, our mission will be sharpened, and we will want to give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name to the politician, the churchman, rich or poor, pink or black, tall or short, fat or slim, young or old. Because it must never be said that Christianity or the church is privately engaging, but socially irrelevant. The good news of the Acts of the Apostles and the spirit that abides in us, as John tells us in that epistle, makes us confident that the good news is transformational news. It is the best news of all that Christ cannot be stopped by our sins, our failures, whether those sins are communal or individual. And the good news is that we are all welcome in our messiness and diversity. So this is us. Look around you. You are from different places. We are of different ages. But the one thing that has gathered us in this place where God has chosen for his name to dwell is the love of God. This is the church. 
one body, different parts. And while we mourn the pain the church has caused us and others, here we are again, through Christ and in the Spirit, creating a place for others and ourselves that we can serve and love in all our beautiful messiness. And so we go back in order to go forward. In between, we practice the pause. Our history tests where we go back to and therefore what we pull out of our storehouses. While at the same time, it challenges us to go forward with a blended creativity that proclaims Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Today, we go back in order to go forward. But we go forward knowing that we are the people of God, empowered by His Spirit to do on His behalf that which nourishes, heals, challenges, admonishes all of us as individual and as a community. So unto God be honor, glory, praise, and the thanksgiving, now and forevermore. Amen. Stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 104.
found on page 112 in your prayer. Intercession from E is 112, 1, 1, 2. Let us pray for the fellowship of the Church of Christ and for all God's creatures. With all who confess the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior, we offer our prayers and praises in spirit and in truth. Father in heaven, yeah, with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who ever lives to intercede for us, we uphold all ministers of God's word and the sacraments, that they may fulfill their high calling in the faith. Father in heaven, yeah, we pray for the unfailing guidance of the Holy Spirit in those who are called to interpret and expound the will of the Lord to others. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. We pray for all organizations within the fellowship of the body of Christ, that their work may edify the people of God and be a faithful witness to the gospel. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. We pray for all persons who do not share our confession of faith, that with courage, truth, and love, we may work together with them and promote the common good. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country and all who make decisions on our behalf, that they may be guided by the Spirit to direct our affairs in righteousness and peace. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. For our judges, magistrates, and all who administer justice, that in all things you may seek to do your will and to protect the rights and freedom of your people. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. In our schools and in all other places of learning, may true knowledge, sound wisdom, and godly discipline ever be found. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. To the poor, the hungry, the unemployed, and all victims of persecution and discrimination of any kind. May God in Christ help us all to bring relief, justice, and protection. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. To all who suffer now from pain and disease, from human discomfort and misery, may God in Christ bring healing and joy for the renewal of their faith. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. That we may use aright the fullness of earth, that our pursuits in science and the advancement of our skills may ever be in service of that true humanity, which is created in the image of God. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. That we may never become the slaves of money or of the lust of power, but may rather strive for victory to the power of love. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. That with all who belong to the communion of saints, both living and the departed, we may ever rejoice in the blessed assurance of that hope which has been won for us in Christ. Father in heaven, receive these prayers in the name of your dear Son, Jesus, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in saying the Mother's Union Prayer. Loving Lord, Lord we, thank we thank you for your, your love so freely, freely given, given to us. All. We pray, pray for families, families around, around the world. The world. Bless, Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening, and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship, and in love and service. Reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Mary Sumner's prayer. All this day, O oh Lord, let, let me touch, touch as, as many lives as possible, as possible for thee. And every life I touch, do thou by thy spirit quicken, whether through the words I speak, the prayer I breathe, or the life I live. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you are gave there before the altar, go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Holy Mass continues on page 126, Form B, with the presentation of the offering. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us. This is right, this morning, this morning. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for in the saints you have given us an example of godly living, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the crown of glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all of the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Eucharistic Prayer E, page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, 
he broke it and gave it to his disciples and the said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, As we partake of this holy food of your unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John, St. Paul, St. Peter, St. Michael, Mary Magdalene, St. Agnes, St. Fabian, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. to share in the body of Christ.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Also, the peace and the satisfaction, and we sing God's song of praise.
with Christ. The first post-communion prayer, page 147. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, Your 
Go forth with their sister and take the heavenly food to a people who are heavenward bound. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, who gives us this holy meal in which we celebrated the glory of the cross and the victory of your martyr John by our communion with Christ in his saving death and resurrection, give us with all your saints the courage to conquer evil and to share the fruit of the tree of life and of the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Once again, a pleasant good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. To you here present, and to those who have joined us remotely on the various social media networks of YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, The Hill Network, and the various radio stations, of Kankadi in Toronto, Fun City in Brooklyn, New York, WK10FM Australia, NBC Radio 705, and The Hill Network. Once again, let me welcome you all to Holy Mass this morning, and we pray that this service was a blessing to your hearts. Today being the fourth Sunday in Easter, and it's also St. George's Day. Let me introduce to you our visitors worshiping with us this morning. From Lincoln, United Kingdom, Mrs. Odette Bonnady Bett. Odette, welcome. And Odette is the daughter of our dear brother, Bert Bonnady. Sharon Chapman from London, UK. <laughs> Julia Lewis Taylor from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> Agatha. Coombs Joseph from Brooklyn, New York. She's sitting behind here. And she is the sister of our dear sister, Deacon Ali. From Barbados, not a stranger to us, Mrs. Marcia Hines. Her daughter, Fiona Hines Lafon. Granddaughter, Jasmine Green. And we'd like, like to welcome also her sister who lives here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Daphne Warner. Daphne? Right. 
Your thought for this week? The truth is like a surgery. It hurts but cures. A lie is like a painkiller. It gives an instant relief but has side effects forever. <laughs> blessed good morning to you once again. Have a blessed Sunday and a productive week. Our leaflet has attracted multiple sponsors this week. Leaflet is sponsored in loving memory of Miss Sylvia Franz, who departed this life on the 22nd of April, 2014. Sponsorship was made possible by her children, Kim and Roxanne, grandchildren, Daniil, Omari, Azari, Shannon, and Kish, and great grandchild, Flo. May she continue to rest in peace. <laughs> Additionally, sponsored by Mr. Kenneth Skakes Aline and Mrs. Rosemary Aline. In thanksgiving to God for his many blessings showered on them and for keeping them loyal to him and to each other, they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary on the 27th of April, it's coming this Saturday, 2024. Kenneth and Rosemary, God's blessing on you. And today's live stream is sponsored by Mr. Rudolph Brown. Mr. Brown is an avid viewer of our online services. So, Rudolph, Kenneth, Rosemary, and the children and grandchildren and great-grandchild of Sylvia, we thank you for your continued support in this ministry of the church. This afternoon, it will be our pleasure and joy to return here for 3 p.m. to celebrate our Paternal Festival. Paternal Festival will take the form of Evensong, Sermon, Benediction, Procession, and our Fellowship in at the car park. The preacher will be our very own Reverend Mrs. Verbina Gonzalez. So we give God thanks as she prepares to share with us her vision and her thoughts on St. George. Our service will have a slight alteration We will do even song, sermon, the benediction, and then we'll go on the procession and end at our car park with the prayer for the city of Kingstown, our diocese, and then the fellowship will continue there. Continue to remind you to keep in your prayer. The Reverend Kiba Alicia Coffey will be instituted as priest in charge of the parish of St. John's Guave in Grenada. And that takes place this Thursday at 5 p.m. at the parish church, St. John's Parish Church in Guave. Also keep in your prayer, the Reverend Kadisha Smart, will be instituted as priest in charge of St. Philip's Parish, Mesopotamia. And this will take place on Thursday, Tuesday, the 30th of April, 
St. Philip's Parish Church in Mesopotamia. Your prayers and presence are kindly requested. During the week, we'll have Mass on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 in the morning. Evening prayer on Wednesday at 5 p.m. The choir will practice as usual on Friday, and the prayer group and Mother's Union will meet on Tuesday at 4.30. Next Sunday, we have our services 5.30 and 7 here at the cathedral, deacon service at the Church of Ascension at 9, and Holy Mass and Sermon at the Church of the Transfiguration in Lomans also at 9. And at 3 p.m. will be our Sunday school. Continue to encourage parents, guardians, and those who have the care of children to bring them or send them to Sunday school. Here, yeah. we have a learning and safe environment for which they can participate. So it's a matter of pronouncement and to keep in mind and in our prayer, one of our own members who is currently facing some legal challenges we keep him in our prayer. And stand by him and with him in and through this time. Continue to give God thanks for his service to the church thus far. And we pray that by the grace of God, what is it, what is, will be. Do we have anyone celebrating today or in the coming week a birthday or anniversary? Anyone who will be traveling this week and wish for a blessing, please come forward now.